Tui Forest. We call it an island in suburbia. It's totally isolated from everything else. It's a big area of eucalypt forest, so it's very typical forest that would have been here before all the suburbs were here. The wildlife that lives in an area like this, especially on a, a very urbanised landscape, there's a lot of people that don't think there's much living here. They actually think it's a dead forest. And I've been trying to change the community awareness of what actually does actually live here. And not until we really look and slow down a bit do we actually start to see there's actually a lot in here that is still happily living in the forest. We were seeing a, quite a big increase in the number of koalas that we were sighting. Um, and we often see them in the same locations. Initially I'd see one or two koalas and probably the most I've seen on any given walk is nine. Um, so it gave me a better perspective of how many koalas there are in the forest and the fact that there are quite a few. And lots of koalas on the campus. Mothers and babies, young males, old males wandering through. I mean, to come to uni to study and then just look up into a tree and see a koala just sitting there is just magnificent. Brisbane has got more biodiversity in terms of species than any other capital city in Australia. And it's because of these big patches of forest completely surrounded by the suburbs. So the animals that can live here, they're really important in terms of the biodiversity of the surrounding city. There's a lot of animals in here that have survive by changing their behaviours. I think the fact that we change it on them, we actually need to start thinking about what we can do to, to help them survive here. Koalas in particular are, are in a massive decline. Having a declining population needs to be the concern and it can't be the number. The number that are, that are existing on the planet right now is not a great benchmark. The fact that those populations and numbers, numbers are declining means we need to be concerned because suddenly they do hit that low number and we do suddenly go, oh now they're vulnerable, but we should have been doing something proactively a long time before that. There's an um, internet site called the Atlas of Living Australia and what that does is it enables us, anyone, to uh, document the wildlife that they see. After I've captured some photos of the, the koalas or the, the bearded dragons or the lace monitors or the powerful owls that I see, I get online and I actually log those photos and the location that they were found and that can create a, a whole lot of data that's actually quite useful where they're found to start with, but I can also document things like the trees they're found in, uh, how many are found there, any sort of bit of information that might be of value for um, environmental protection in particular. It's getting kids engaged and connected back with, with the environment because they're the ones that are, you know, invariably are going to have to protect it in the future. It's those little ecological hooks that make people value these places better. The uh, sense of wonder that we get and the engagement we get with kids that come out into the forest is, I, you can't explain it, you can't um, describe how much they, they just are amazed at what they see out here.